In this video, we've gone soup to nuts on building and launching a Drupal site. In the introduction, we covered the basics of setting up our database, how to get our files and where they needed to go, and then we actually did the installation on our live server. Then we walked through an orientation to give a general feel for what was in the core Drupal installation. We walked through installing one module and then reviewed the suite of modules we'll be using in the video. And then we looked at the important concept of content types in Drupal, and we played around with some of the settings and workflow so that we could distinguish between them and set them up the way that our users are going to need to use them. Then we bulk generated a bunch of content so we could see how it was working and create listings for them so that people could find the content on the site. In terms of users, we set up several different roles so that we could give our users different levels of responsibility. And then we used the comment module as a specific example of how we could set those permissions and use those roles effectively. We finished up by going over a general strategy for how to fill out the rest of the permissions based on the needs for our site. We also looked at Drupal's flexible taxonomy system. We set up a few new vocabularies. One of them was a very organic free tagging system, and the other was a very structured select list vocabulary. And this allowed us to group our content together and create listings and organize them according to the needs of the site. The next thing we looked at was Drupal's theme system, and we uh, looked at some contributed themes and how you can find them and download them and add them to your site to change the look completely. We also looked at how themes have different regions and the entire block system for Drupal that lets you put little pieces of extra content around your site. We also looked at the very important job of a site builder, which is to actually find the modules that fit the needs of the site. We covered a variety of strategies for not only locating the modules, but then being able to assess them and making sure we're getting the best module for our needs. We used the specific example of finding a module to cover our WYSIWYG needs on this site. Once we determined the module that we were going to use for WYSIWYG, then we walked through the steps of configuring that, particularly in relation to input formats and the filters that are within those formats, to make sure that everything was working properly and the users were getting the experience that they would expect. The input formats allowed us to control how much our users could do by stripping out and restricting certain things, but it also gave them extra features and make things easier for them when it came to creating content. We also added on a suite of modules that could handle image handling so that our users could simply add an image right in the WYSIWYG. Another important topic that we covered was access control. We looked at the private module for node access and that allowed us to control access to each individual piece of content. Then we looked at the views modules access settings and that let us control access to listings of content. Then we had a discussion about Drupal's file system, which allows you to choose between either having a private file system or public. The next thing that we looked at was how to set up our site so that we could do resource intensive tasks on a periodic basis. We did this using cron. Once we set cron up, that created our search index so that we could then begin to search the site. From there, we moved on to looking at search configuration so that we could get it set up exactly the way we needed it. Finally, we went through a checklist as we prepared our site for launch. We covered a number of things that would help us with performance and security that we might not have paid so much attention to while we were building the site and doing development on it, but are really important for when we go live. From there, we moved to looking into the future to make sure that you knew the upgrade steps that were required to keep your site secure for the entire life of your website. So we hope you enjoyed site building with Drupal. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.